Hi everyone. And welcome back to my channel. Today's video we are going to do an animal oracle reading. So I'm going to, going to be using two different sets of oracle cards today, which I'll show you now. So first of all we've got the messages from your animal spirit guides by Stephen D. Farmer. We've used this deck before um, in another reading and you may also recognise the name Stephen D. Farmer if you've watched the animal spirit guide readings, um, the book reading that I've been doing on here. So that's the one deck that we're going to be using and these are the bottom cards in each of the decks. And then the second deck of cards we're going to be using are the Archangel Animal Oracle Cards by Diana Cooper. This is a new deck of cards that were recently bought for me and they've just been cleansed with white sage smoke. Here's the white sage that I used to cleanse the cards. I've also got some Paolo Santo in there as well, but I just used the white sage today. I love the sound of the abalone shells. And they're great for smudging and burning white sage. Okay, so as with all of the other readings like this I've done before, I have placed a different crystal on each pile of cards to help draw your attention to whichever one. You may be drawn to the cards, you may be drawn to the position the cards are in, you may be drawn to the um, gemstone, but it's just to help focus your attentions. So today we've got Deck number one is marked with a smoky quartz pyramid. It does look like um, obsidian on the camera and from afar, but when you hold it up to the light, it is actually smoky quartz. It's just a very dark quartz. Deck number two is marked by a green aventurine elephant. cute little thing. I've got quite a few of these elephants. I think they're lovely. And then deck number three is marked with a howlite heart. And deck number four with a clear quartz pyramid. So if I could ask you to just focus your attention on the four piles of cards first of all and then see which one you're drawn towards. And I'll just give you a few seconds to do that. Okay. And then we'll make a start on discerning the meanings of each of these piles of cards to give you some, uh, some guidance from the animal kingdom. Okay, let's begin. pick it up. So the first pile of cards is the blue heron and the elephant. So the blue heron comes through to tell you to make a stand for what you believe in and do what feels right in spite of any judgment or disapproval from others. This card also tells me that you need to focus attention on your heart chakra. Um, because of the greens that we've got in this picture, you need to focus some attention on your heart chakra and make sure you're loving yourself. We also need to focus on the third eye chakra 
So I feel that perhaps you're quite a spiritual person and your intuition is quite strong. And at this time you need to le listen to that intuition. And then also, we've got the sacral chakra. So it feels like you might be holding quite a lot of anxiety in the stomach area at the moment. And you need to find a way of releasing that and letting go of that anxiety so it isn't upsetting the stomach. So today's reading is a little bit different because I'm going to be doing a bit of intuitive uh, tarot based on the colours that come up as well um, and talking about chakra healing. So um, that's why this might seem a little bit different to some of my other readings. So we'll have a look in the guidebook as well at the blue heron. I think I've skipped past. Okay. The blue heron. Trust your deepest sense of knowing what the right action is and do it. And don't rely on others to tell you what to do or how to act. Not everyone will approve of the decisions you make. And if your choice goes against the grain of what people expect from you, you'll no doubt run into strong criticism and judgment. Stand still, look around you and breathe. You're doing just fine in spite of others' assessments of you. Besides, your greatest and most fulfilling support will come from that place inside that guides you by revealing signs that tell you what path to follow. Heeding these signs helps your soul be in alignment with spirit's intent for you. You may have to get both feet in the water and wade through the dregs of other people's disapproval, asserting yourself where needed. Practical optimism and clarity of purpose will always dissipate any tendencies towards cynicism or self-pity. Trust in your inner knowing and let that be the source of your strength to help you keep moving forward. And the associations of the Blue Her Heron are autonomy dignity, self-determination, balance, gracefulness, peacefulness, resolve, uniqueness, illumination, independence, boundaries, expl exploration, fluidity, self-reliance, dignity and deliberateness. deliberateness. <laughs> okay, so that's the blue heron for you. And then for the second part of your reading, we have the elephant. And the elephant tells us to open yourself to true abundance. And this card is associated with Archangels Mary and Raphael. And we've got some of the similar colours here that I talked about. So again, we're looking at the heart chakra and the third eye chakra. those back and we'll have a look in the guidebook. I'm not going to hold the guidebooks in front of the camera actually because it's easier if I read them to the side slightly. Let's find the elephant. Okay I'm just going to have a little drink because my throat is kind of dry. Right so the elephant then. The elephant card reminds you to keep your frequency high by having more fun, playing and being joyful. Whether you are male or female, practice divine feminine qualities within every area of your life to ensure that you have a strong and stable foundation for your spiritual life. Sit quietly and breathe into your third eye. Oh, there we go tuning into the Elephant Kingdom and Archangel Raphael, the awesome Emerald Angel of Healing and Abundance. Then link into Jupiter and its ascended aspect, Jumbe, to call in perfect health and cosmic abundance to bathe your consciousness. Feel this energy permeate your cells and know the universe supports your divine perfection and heart's desire. Then send out a stream of light to help build the crystalline web of light around our planet. Okay, so let's move on to deck number two.
and we have the condor. You're too enmeshed in this situation, so step back and see the bigger picture before making any decisions or taking action. Now the main colour that stands out to me, and it's only one colour that's standing out, I don't feel I need to talk about these, but I need to talk about the purple here. And I need to say that your crown chakra um, needs some healing. So I don't know whether you're caught up in your thoughts at the moment. Um, yeah, it feels like your mind is never really quiet. I don't know whether you've been suffering headaches. I do actually need to talk about the blue because I'm being drawn to the forehead and again to the third eye. So I think the third eye and the crown chakra is where we're having some issues here. You're holding too much stress in that area. You need to be able to let those thoughts be released. And let's have a look for the additional meanings for the condor. Okay, so this tells, it, it tells us that you've lost perspective because you either believe there's something that you absolutely need to have happen or else you're simply being too stubborn to let go. Step back and take a fresh look at your circumstances. It's the forest versus the trees dilemma. You're too close to clearly discern the reality of what's actually taking place. So make a practice of detachment. Most people think of this as a cold, sterile way of responding to a situation or person. But nothing is further from the truth. It's far worse to remain so utterly involved and entangled that you lose perspective. And sometimes even yourself. This all too familiar pattern stems from the guilty feeling that somehow you're not doing enough unless you completely immerse yourself into the problem or person continually trying to fix the situation or rescue the individual involved. While this may give you a temporary sense of satisfaction, doing so also creates unhealthy dependencies, yours and others. Sorry about the car. True detachment is objective compassion, a state of mind and heart where you still care very much but are dist distanced enough so that you're not under the illusion that you can somehow control the situation or person through your participation or intervention. In any situation or conversation, follow these four simple guidelines. First, be 100% present and attentive. Second, speak your truth or maintain a dignified silence. Third, keep the focus on what's really important and what really matters. And fourth, let go of any attachment to outcome. These four steps will help you keep your perspective while remaining compassionately involved and detached at the same time. You can still wield your influence by stating your preferences, whether strong or mild, without insisting on getting your own way. Express yourself and see what happens, all the while honouring and respecting others. And then the associations we have of the condor are perspective, vision, awareness, death and rebirth, independence, solitude, inspiration, creativity, leadership, Pachamama, Mother Earth, simplicity, sensitivity and detoxification. And then we're moving on to the kangaroo and the kangaroo tells us to be a force for good and the associations are with archangels Rokhael, Gersiza and Saldolfan. So, San, sorry, Sandalfon. So the kangaroo is also saying to act as a peaceful warrior. And the guidance with this card is, this is the card of wise, balanced, compassionate leadership. Be a peaceful warrior and upholder of justice and equality. 
particularly help those who are vulnerable, treat our beautiful planet with respect and love, then nature will support you. At the same time, you are invited to tune into the information and knowledge held within the Lemurian crystals. You may not be consciously aware that you are receiving light when you think about or hold one of these sacred crystals. Nevertheless, a download of keys and codes for the new golden age is being transmitted to you and will enable you to ease your journey through life. Be open to receiving it. Now that one I think was quite confusing, so I need to tie it back to the first one for you. Um, the situation or the person that you're very enmeshed in, you need to understand that you do have the knowledge within yourself to step back, but also to help resolve that situation. But you need to do it from more of a distance so that your energy is not being zapped. Okay, moving on to the third deck. And we have the snow leopard and the snow leopard tells us to take some time out of your usual life and spend it in solitude so this one i need to talk a lot about the throat chakra and the heart chakra as well and touch upon the crown slightly but mainly the throat chakra so i don't know whether it's that you've been voicing your opinions too much and perhaps you needed to have kept quiet or perhaps you've been having opinions voiced at you and it's been affecting your thoughts and your emotions. So this card is all about stepping away from that and having some solitude to um, rebalance and to put yourself first. Okay, Snow Leopard. It can be difficult these days to spend time in solitude, to unplug, get off the electronic grid and find a quiet place in or near nature. Yet it's important to do so at this time. Turn off the phone, computer, don't do it yet because we're, we're enjoying this video together, right? Um, and television, if only for a few hours. Although you may feel a little anxious and restless when you first do so, these feelings will pass. Use the time for contemplation and meditation. It's not isolation, it's solitude. Solitude is a conscious and loving choice to be alone for a period of time, while isolation is habitual and reflective and reflects a coping pattern to avoid discomfort and intimacy. If possible, take a full day by yourself and just do whatever you feel like doing. Whatever length of time you spend in solitude, be sure to write as often as you can in your journal. If you should feel guilty or anxious about the thought of doing this, or even while you're actually doing it, use your breath to help you relax. As much as you possibly can during the period of alone time, remind yourself to breathe and relax. Whenever you notice your breathing becoming shallow, take three or four slow, deep breaths and watch how your tension and anxiety dissipate. Enjoy the feeling of having the sacred space of solitude surrounding you and remember, you're never really alone. The associations then of the snow leopard are solitude, self-reliance, balance, silence, stealth, confidence, determination, perseverance, containment, sensitivity, intuition, reliability, mysterious, integration and shamanism let me just have a look at what the second card was so the second card is the eagle and the eagle tells us to seize opportunities courageously and the eagle is associated with archangel book book P. apologies for my pronunciation I've, I've not come across that archangel before so I don't know how to pronounce it. Bokpi, I think we'll go with. Um, let's find the eagle in here. Okay. These magnificent birds... Oh, sorry, I'm not going to read that bit. Let's pop to the guidance. This is the card of the visionary who focuses with clarity and awareness on the objective. 
you are advised to be very clear about what you want to achieve or manifest. View it from the most enlightened perspective so that your intention is for the supreme good. Be watchful and aware of everything that is happening. Remain motivated so that when you are ready for action, you will move fearlessly and tenaciously. Treat challenges and seeming setbacks as opportunities to raise your game. Constantly remain calm, centred and serene, no matter what you are presented with. When you do this, you will always stand in your power. People will see your majesty and will respect and honour you and your vision. Be aware of your own divine splendour. Okay, let's move on to the final deck. Gosh, I don't know how to pronounce this either. The the pui, pu, puo, puo? Um, It's a Hawaiian owl. I can say that one. So this card is telling you that your ancestral spirit guides are offering your guidance now. Offering you guidance now. So you need to pay pay close attention to signs and omens from them. So here we're focusing on some of the higher chakras as well. We're focusing on the heart chakra. We're focusing on the throat chakra and the third eye. So from the heart chakra up to the third eye, I feel this is where you're going to be um, getting a sense of that guidance that you're being offered. So you'll know in your heart what decisions that you should be making. You may even have a spiritual connection. So you're seeing through the third eye and you need to know that at this time you need to be able to speak your truth. I wonder if it'll tell me how to pronounce it as well. Oh, it does. So it's pronounced the Pueo, 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 Hawaiian Owl. You can receive guidance from your ancestors in the spirit world, no matter what their age, when they died, or how many generations ago they walked on the earth. A lot of people don't understand that actually. I bring through spirit for people and they may be from two or three generations back and they feel that because they didn't know them at the same time on the earth plane that they can't possibly come through. But it's just not true. We remain connected through these blood and spiritual and soul connections to particular spirits and they will still come through and guide us. Okay, so back to the card. They're offering you help in many ways right now, so play co pay close attention to the signs they give you. This guidance can come through to you in many forms, whether through your eyes, ears, feelings or thoughts. Sometimes your ancestral spirit guides appear in dreams, particularly vivid ones. You might see someone who looks like one of your ancestors or unexpectedly come across a photo or a memorabilia that reminds you of this person. Often a particular animal making an appearance before you is a way in which your ancestral guide is trying to reach you. You might hear something that makes you think of a specific ancestor or simply feel their presence. And thoughts about a certain ancestor, especially unexpected and recurring thoughts, suggest that they're nearby. Repetition is key here. In whatever ways your ancestors attempt to contact you, when signs continue to show up that make you think of your deceased loved ones, know that these physical manifestations demonstrate that they're with you. You may have known some of these ancestors in the physical world prior to their deaths, or they may be ancestors from long ago, several generations before your birth, surpassing the boundaries of conscious memory. Regardless of who they are, always give thanks to your ancestral spirit guides and even appeal to these benevolent helpers whenever guidance is needed. The associations of the Puyo are dignity, omens, guidance, protection, wisdom, knowledge, inspiration, mysteriousness, silence, sacredness, diversity, omakua, which is the ancestor showing up as a spirit animal. And then we move on to the ant and the ant says 
that you need to cooperate for the highest good of the community. And this is related to Archangel Premenilek. Premenilek. I'm learning to hear today as well. I've not heard of some of these these uh, archangels. Okay, let's find that out. So the message of the ant card is to devote yourself to making your home welcoming and harmonious while at the same time acting to bring your community together. You can take small steps like picking up litter or smiling at your neighbours or aim higher and actively offer yourself in service. The ants carry the key to Sirius, which is to understand the universal Metatron cube. So that's the image that you can see on the card there. Or here. Um, I think it might also be called the flower of life, or that might be different, I'm not sure. Um, look at it and absorb its energy. This is a fundamental tool to open your consciousness to the power of sacred geometry. The patterns act as codes that start to balance you and bring you into alignment with your soul blueprint. The angels will begin to sing, pouring their beautiful sonics over you. This will attract higher energies and people towards you. So this links in quite well with the first card because I feel that this is all about connecting back to those ancestors, working together as a community to, uh, with, with your ancestors to achieve what needs to be achieved and unlocking enlightenment and spiritual connections. Okay, so we're going to leave it to uh, leave it there for today's video, and thank you for watching. I hope you were able to get some guidance from the cards today. Um, please don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will see you next time. Bye, everyone.